In the previous part of this lesson, we looked at how to return values of different data types, such as numbers and dates, from an input box. This part of the lesson explains what happens when that process goes wrong. So let's start by opening up the file that I've already downloaded and extracted. And when the file's opened, we can click Enable Content, and then head to the Developer tab and open the Visual Basic Editor to see the code that I've already written. The first subroutine in this module called Type Mismatch Errors, which uh, should give you a bit of a clue as to what's about to happen, asks the user to enter a date of birth into an input box, and then the code attempts to capture that in a variable whose type is set to date. That's absolutely fine as long as we do enter something which is a valid date into the input box. Let's say, let's say I was born yesterday. Let's go for 6 Feb 2019. When I click OK, Although that is technically returned as a string, because it can be implicitly converted into a date, that will happen automatically and successfully be stored in that variable with no errors. If I run the subroutine again, and this time enter a value which can't be explicitly converted into a date, let's write the literal word, yesterday. If I click OK, this time I receive a runtime error, a type mismatch error. So the value returned by the input box is in the wrong type to be stored successfully in the date variable. Uh, we can click the debug if we want to. It's fairly obvious which line has caused the issue as there's only one single instruction in the subroutine, but clearly this is no good. We can't control what the user types into the input box. Therefore, we can't really rely on this system working. One fairly simple way to avoid this type mismatch error is shown in the second subroutine called storing strings. And again, as the name suggests, the idea behind this one is that we always capture the result of an input box in a variable with the string type. The advantage of doing this is it gives us the opportunity to test if the value entered can be successfully converted into a date or a number before we attempt to do that. Let's add some code that checks if the value held in the DOB string variable can be successfully converted into a date. And if not, we can present the user with an error message. So let's write an if statement with a not operator and the isDate function. I can pass the value of DOB string into the isDate function. And if that is not a valid date, I can present a message box which says so. That's not a date, which should be fairly clear. I can also maybe present a VB critical symbol on the message to make it look a little more official and serious. And then I definitely want to exit from the subroutine if I haven't actually entered a valid value. I can close the if statement with end if, and then I can give the system a quick test. If I run the subroutine using F5, I can enter a valid date of birth. Let's go for 6th Feb 2019 and click OK or press Enter. That should then pass my validation and ask me for the next value. Let's go for one, two, three for the height in centimeters. If I run this one again, and again, this time I'll type in something that can't be legitimately converted into a date. If I click OK this time, I'm told that that's not a date. So I can click OK and the procedure simply ends. We can take exactly the same approach using a different function to test if the height in centimeters string variable contains a value that could be converted into a number. Let's just copy and paste the if statement. The, the overall structure of this is the same. So once we've captured a value in the height centimeters string variable, we can use the isNumeric function to check if it is a number. Let's change the DOB string to height in centimeters string. And then if that's not true, if I, if I don't have a valid number stored in the variable, I can say that's not a number. Once again, a very quick, simple test. If I hit F5 to run the subroutine, I can enter, let's quickly enter a date, 6 second 2019. And then let's enter something that definitely is not a number. There we go, that's definitely not a number. So if I click OK, I'll be told so. And then the subroutine just ends. Once you've established that the values captured in a string variable could be converted to another type successfully, you may wish to explicitly perform that conversion. Let's do this with a DOB variable. So let's declare a new variable, dim DOB, as date. Once I've passed the validation after the end if statement, I can write an instruction which converts the date of birth string into a date and capture that in the new DOB variable. 
so I can assign a value to the DOB variable by making it equal to the result of the C date function. C date convert to a date. Every data type in VBA has a conversion function, which allows you to pass in a value of any other type and convert it to the specified type. So I want to convert DOB string into a date and store the result in the DOB variable. You may remember from the previous part of this lesson that you don't actually need a conversion function to convert a value. I could just allocate the value of the DOB string variable to the DOB variable and implicit type conversion will automatically convert it into a string. When it comes to things like this, I think your code is easier to read if you are explicit about every conversion you make. So I prefer to write the cdate function to indicate that that is what I'm explicitly trying to do. We can use the same technique with a different function to convert the height in centimeter string to an integer. Let's declare a new variable, height cm, as integer. Once I've passed my validation at the end, and I haven't exited from the subroutine because this is a number, I can say height in cm equals, the function to convert to an integer is cint, and then I can pass in the value of the height in centimeters string variable. At this point, we should probably use some basic debugging techniques just to establish that all these things are working correctly. So let's view the locals window and then begin stepping through our storing strings subroutine. So we can enter a date into the input box. Let's go with a valid date just to check that this works. We've already established that our code, uh, our validation prevents us from continuing with an invalid date. So 6 Feb 2019 and we will successfully pass the validation. So what we should see here now is that the value stored in this string variable will be converted into a date and then stored in the DOB variable. And there we go, 6th of Feb, 2019. Same thing for the height in centimeters. I'll go with one, two, three, click OK. Uh, this is clearly a number. So we pass our validation and then we convert this string into an integer and assign it to the height in centimeters variable. So there we go all the correct data types stored with no possibility of continuing with an invalid data type. 